All right, who's ready to spring forward this weekend? Not me. Okay, <laughs> after meteorologist Jacob Dickey joins us. Jacob, we got some good questions here today. Yeah. Okay. We always have good questions, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Do. You guys really put your thinking caps on. Yeah. Okay, first one up here. It was announced today that La Nina is over. What does that mean? Yay. Should we be celebrating? Yeah, we, we should, I think. Okay, okay, why? Well, La Nina tends to be a really, uh, we talked about what La Nina and El Nino are. That has to deal with the, how the Pacific waters are you know, warm or cold and whatnot and how that affects our weather patterns. And so we've been in La Nina winters the past three winters, and the last two winters before this one were really awful La Nina winters. This one we just kind of scraped on through pretty lucky i think uh, all things considered and transitioning out of that also worldwide la nina tends to be really tough on agricultural crops mm. so sometimes a small portion of you know food prices they increase because of a lot of different factors but the factor of hey la nina weather has destroyed agricultural crops around the country and around the world that does play a factor in that. So uh, El Nino, a little more favorable for the agricultural community. Oh, okay. Yep. So I'm going to show good. you graphical. Can I do that real fast? Sure. I've got, I've got some fun graphics here. This is the forecast. So we're leaving La Nina. Hooray! Well, we're on our way to El Nino. And so that's a whole different set of weather uh, forecasts. But the blue bar is the probability of La Nina happening. The gray bar is neutral. And El Nino is in red. You see there that the letters are the first letter of the month. So you see about the middle of the screen, May, June, July, then June, July, August. Sometime over the summer into the fall, we tend to be heading towards El Nino type weather. Now, let's talk La Nina real quick. A little reminder, folks home may not remember, uh, La Nina and the impacts it has in weather, specifically in the United States, that's when the trade winds, you know, those normally blow around the equator from east to west. It pushes the warm water away from the uh, coast normally. Uh, in certain years, it causes upwelling, which causes cooler weather to surface in the eastern Pacific. That's La Nina. So if it's cooler, off the coast of uh, the, uh, Central America, South America, that is La Nina. And generally in that, we are seeing a more active pattern. We have seen that be the case for us with these clipper systems coming on through. It's also been a wet winter for the past couple of years. We just haven't transferred any of that wetness to snow this year for one way or another. Let's talk real quick El Nino. What does this mean? Now, you generally don't see these impacts as much in the summer months. It's more fall and winter, especially where you see whether El Nino or La Nina takes effect. And so by next winter, we think we'll be in El Nino. And uh, that happens when it's warmer off the coast of South America and Central America on the Pacific side here. And in turn, that affects the jet stream where we tend to be a little drier in the region and also a little warmer. Although generally summers and falls in El Nino weather tend to be uh, a little cooler and a little wetter than normal. So we'll watch and see how that plays out, but certainly maybe there's some big change coming, right? Okay, well, Who's, who knows? Speaking of change, daylight saving time is this weekend. It is. And our next question, what should we expect besides pushing our clock forward an hour? Well, something you should think about is change your smoke detector batteries. Oh, okay. That's one thing, you change your clocks, change your batteries, and also change your weather radio batteries. If you don't have a weather radio, oh. You might think about getting one because that's a great way to stay connected. Uh, you know, we want to think of a weather radio as a smoke detector for your house for storms. If Heather could have a Jacob radio to detect when I'm coming by, she'd probably love that. But you know, we talk about. I would about, not change the batteries in that one. Yeah, I yeah. Risk it. Yeah. So okay. So spring forward. Uh, this is the fun thing I think. Now today's sunset 5:53. We spring forward Sunday morning. It means we lose an hour of sleep. But this is kind of. Something I tend to look forward to is uh, next Wednesday, the sunset will be just before 7 yes, p.m. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I'm that a great? big fan. Yeah, it is. So. Okay, final question. Okay. You posted a photo this afternoon of some clouds. <laughs> what you are can't those? say that? I wanted to see if you could say that. <laughs> it looks like asparagus, asparagus. Yeah, it's asparagus undulatus. Oh, yeah, just Something like that. Like that. <laughs> Sounds fancy. I'm That's so the glad photo. you saw that one and not me. That's the photo right there. I think there. you waited for me to say that. <laughs> I, I did. I was eagerly waiting. That's the photo I posted. Uh, Macy from Rancho sent this to me, and she said, what is that? See how those clouds are kind of wavy beneath them? They, they're almost weird. Uh, that's a fancy name. Basically, it stands for turbulent wave cloud. It's, uh, I think, Latin or something. Some, some meteorologist somewhere thought, let's make it Latin. Anyways, it's a turbulent wave cloud. What happens is we've got a little bit of wind shear beneath rising motion, and that rising motion turns into clouds. So you almost get these sharp lines and edges there. That was evident over Rantoul. They're fairly common, but it's a rather new category for clouds. It's not something that was recognized formally, because usually they form under altocumulus or stratocumulus clouds. And so they kind of decided, well, wait a minute, this is formed a little differently. We should at least recognize that as a category. So sometimes when you've got some turbulent weather, Weather, something like that in the area. Turbulent wave clouds. 
okay. which is named Undulatus asparagus. Undulatus. Very good. Undulatus. Very good. Undula We're going to call it Undulatus asparagus now. <laughs> Love it. Asparagus. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Very good. Yes. If you would like to ask a question, you can post it on Jacob's Facebook page. You can email it to him. You can um, do so on Twitter as well. Speaking of turbulent, it's about to get turbulent over here for old Jacob Dickey, I hear. But oh, also ahead.